Biotech company eGenesis recently announced its second patient implanted with a pig kidney. This animal-to-human organ transplant, or xenotransplant, was made possible through advancements in gene editing and cloning. We spoke with the president and CEO of eGenesis to learn about how it's done, when this procedure might become more common in the medical field, and what's next. For people living with kidney failure, toxic waste usually filtered out by the kidneys starts to accumulate in the blood. Treatment options are usually a kidney transplant or dialysis, in which a machine filters the blood several times a week, sometimes for hours at a time. It's very hard for me to get a kidney transplant from a human. It'll be seven years or so before I would come up on the list and on average, the person lives five years on dialysis. So I had a little bit of a shortage of time, you know. In an effort to expand the limited pool of organs available for transplant, eGenesis and other companies have been working on making animal organs a viable option. If you take a, a pig organ, for instance, that's unmodified and try to transplant that into a person, that's gonna be rejected in a matter of minutes to hours, right? There's just too much incompatibility. Rejection is also a risk in human-to-human -human transplants, as the body's immune system is programmed to attack any foreign tissue inside the body. That's where gene editing comes in. Some people have the misconception that we edit the adult animal. We don't. We edit the cells, and then we can produce the adult animals from the cells. Several edits are made to the donor animal's genome, adding human genes to help with the incorporation of the organ into the body, as well as removing some pig genes in order to reduce the risk of organ rejection and cross-species infection. Every pig breed has anywhere from 50 to 70 copies of a retrovirus in their genome. The only way to address it is to edit the genome. These edits are made possible by a gene editing technology called CRISPR-Cas9, winner of the 2020 Nobel Prize for Chemistry. CRISPR comes from a special sequence of DNA that bacteria use to fight off viruses. And Cas9 is a protein that operates like a pair of genetic scissors to make specific edits to the genome of targeted cells. And so we established this group of cells that we now have all the edits that we need. We turn that cell into a pig through a cloning process very similar to what was used to clone Dolly uh, in the 90s. Pigs raised for such a special purpose have to be raised in a special place. It's a clean facility, so we try to you know, control the air, we control the water, we control the food. As the animals grow, we're constantly um, analyzing, asking the question, you know, are there pathogens in the facility that we need to be worried about? Curtis tells me eGenesis is planning several additional transplants this year with the goal of culminating in a trial of about 50 patients, after which the company hopes to have enough data to make this type of procedure more widely available. You know, kidney is just the beginning. As we learn more, it will inform it, our engineering approaches and, and potentially allow us to bring forward you know, transplantable livers and, and lungs as well. As for xenotransplant recipient Tim Andrews, he's had his new kidney for about two months and the latest report from eGenesis says he's doing well. This is hope. Hope is the biggest thing. You know, the chance to be free from the machine and live your life. What do you think about xenotransplants? Let us know down in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Jesse Orl. See you next time with the fam.